Hi, I'm Sally Chan and I'm a advertising lecturer. I hope you're coping well given the current situation that we're in. Who would have thought I'd be sat here talking to you through the medium of isolated talks? Um, but here we are. I wonder how you are surviving lockdown. Are you taking on new skills? Perhaps you're in the middle of learning online. Um, are you brushing up on your digital skills? Maybe you started a new hobby um, or even learning a new language. If you have children, um, perhaps you've been following some sort of a keep fit routine, thanks to Joe Wicks. Um, or if you're homeschooling like I am, then then it's, it's sort of maybe discovering lots of new stuff that you didn't know at school, um, including things like algebra. No idea what all that's about still. But anyway, if you're like me, perhaps you started Tai Chi. Um, I've started doing this online due to social distancing um, requirements um, and I have to say this activity has actually single-handedly single -handedly got me out of the rut that I was in for the last three weeks. Why? Well, I can say, I can say a bit more about it because I've done it for three weeks. It's basically um, a Chinese form of martial arts, you probably know that already, but it teaches you basically how to slow right down, meditate and control your thoughts and your breathing. Um, and it sort of allows you to sort of to keep in touch with nature as well. So I've been doing this for three weeks now and I have to say I'm already harnessing my inner chi, um, that powerful energy um, that we have in, inside of us. So we can bring good chi into your body apparently and lift out the um, and expel the, the bad chi. So very, very good for balancing your sort of yin and your yang. Uh, so basically, I feel a bit more chilled. Uh, so I feel ready to do this talk with you. Um, until, obviously, depending on what Boris is going to come up with um, in his uh, daily briefings. But anyway, this brings me uh, nicely to what I want to, to talk about. No prices for guessing. It is about martial arts. So I've been doing probably, not sure if you can guess, but I've been a practitioner of um, karate for quite a while now. And I've really, really missed the, um, the sort of contact element that this form of um, Japanese martial arts um, provides when, when, you, when you're training. Now, before lockdown, my family and I would be training three, three times a week um, at our local um, karate club with about 30 to 40 people. We have a sensei who's our instructor who we totally respect and you know, and it, it's fantastic. We train with people of all ages, all shapes and sizes and all abilities. As with all sports, seriously addictive. Um, but most of all, it allows me, this is the great thing about it for me personally, I get to spar with people half my age, which is fantastic. So, you know, I am really that poster girl for um hashtag you know fight like a girl that's me um now although some elements of um karate can be done um on your own uh in your own space in your own time things like kata which are like patterns that allows you to to sort of um you know go through the moves with an imaginary opponent um it has been really hard to get back into it since lockdown so i've really really struggled um, so that's been something that I wasn't aware that I would struggle with, but I have. Anyway, I digress. So at this point, um, let me guess, I will have either piqued your uh, interest in martial arts or have put you to sleep. Now, as creatives or advertisers, you must be thinking, what's all this got to do with advertising? Well, martial arts is everywhere, isn't it? Um, you yourself or your family members or your children or what have you probably know people who do taekwondo, karate or kung fu. So, yeah, you could say it's everywhere. Um, but it didn't really take off in Britain till the 1970s, really, um, when this character, Bruce Lee, came about. So... I'm reading his book at the moment, a fantastic book by Matthew Collier. I recommend a read because it's got fantastic, never-seen-before pictures of Bruce 
in his um, youth and so on, before he became famous, basically. And it talks about his his sort of um, family um, and his background. Um, and, you know, really, really interesting historical overview. More about that later. So basically, you will uh, know that, you know, through his films like Fist of Fury, Enter the Dragon and so on and so forth, um, has really you know, had an influence on, on British um, television in terms of our enjoyment of, of um, British TV and films and so on and so forth. Bruce Lee is, is, is definitely way up there in terms of, um, uh, you know, who we recognise as your typical martial artist. So these are the films from um, Hollywood, basically. And we also have in, in Britain, we have our equivalent of uh, the water margin. I don't know if anybody remembers the the water margin. So this is actually a Japanese adaptation of a, a classic Chinese novel. Really worth well worth having a look if, if you're not familiar with it. Um, it's well known for its really awful dubbing of um, the sort of actors because they're obviously speaking in sort of Japanese. It's for a Japanese audience. We'd sort of dubbed it in English, but it's sort of like accented Oriental. Sort of um, yeah, really bad dubbing. Got to, got to uh, have a look, check that out if you're not aware of it. Then um, you've also got Monkey as well, Monkey King. Um, writing a, a paper about Monkey King, um, and it's based on uh, Chinese folklore, but again um, from Japanese um, television, which came into uh, Britain and became really really popular. Um, and don't forget the legend that is. Bert Kwok and his infamous role as Kato uh, in the uh, the Pink Panther movies um, from I think the 1960s to around 1992. It went on for that long. It was that popular, and it really brought um, uh, martial arts comedy uh, to a wider audience. I'm really only scratching the surface there in terms of martial arts influence um, in films um, in in Britain. Now. A bit about um, my upbringing. So as a teenager growing up in Cardiff during the 1970s, these were the first images of Chinese or Oriental looking characters on, on television for me. So whether I was ready or not, these imageries helped to shape my identity um, as a British born Chinese in Cardiff. Um, why? Well, um, basically what I saw on TV, half the power to affect not only how I saw myself, but also how others saw me. So like all teenagers at the time, all I wanted to do was martial arts. We're talking about the 1970s and 80s here, you know. You got to have been in Cloud Cuckoo's Land, Cloud Cuckoo Land, not to know um, how popular martial arts was. So, yeah, it was really, really important that, and, and I was really, really wanting, I remember this real great need to want to learn martial arts because I really wanted to show people that I know more about martial arts than the, the Chinese burn, I think, that people were, were doing in, in the playgrounds at, at the time, you know, school children. Um, however, what, what am I really talking about? Am I digressing again? Mm, I'm heading towards what I want to be talking about, and that is basically about stereotypes in sort of TV and films and all these sorts of things. And when I did this talk earlier at the beginning, it would have been interesting to, to figure out if people actually had a perception or a stereotype or formed an opinion of me before I actually spoke. And then within the first five minutes of hearing me speak, did that opinion then shift a little bit or, or what? Or did it get reinforced because I was talking about martial arts and so on and so forth? So I'm quite sort of um, big on things like stereotypes and diversity champion at, at work as well. So, um, you know, deal with a lot of these sort of cases um, related to uh, discrimination and sort of um, ensuring, you know, there's this sort of fair play and so on and so forth um, at work and stuff. So stereotypes, basically, according to Stuart Hall, who's the guru of um, representation, he said that stereotypes are basically where we place people into various different categories or we're doing the reductionist approach where we reduce people to a few simple characteristics. This is coupled with over-exaggeration of 
certain features or for simplifying um, our differences. All of these sort of stereotypes causes divisions, as, as we all know. Uh, causes divisions because it puts people into two camps, those who are accepted um, and the other. The other are the ones who don't belong, basically. So that's basically what stereotyping is all about. It's giving you a bit of a, uh, a, an insight into that. But for advertising, like its moving um, image um, uh, cousin in film, it uh, also has the power uh, to influence people too. Because, you know, as I trawl through a, a myriad of TV ads as part of my research, um, you will find martial arts, so kung fu, karate, judo, and their sort of variants. They're recurrent themes, actually, in British television advertising. Now, when I delved into the archives, this goes as far back as the 1960s, um, and it was during its 1970s heyday that um, the theme was used a lot more. So you can see martial arts um, representation or, or its use in um, alcohol advertising, for example. So you've got uh, Guinness in 1968. Then, I mean, who can forget the, um, the notorious high karate aftershave in 1973? Then you've got, um, in the 1980s, the increasing popularity of martial arts in Britain, which led to its vast use on TV adverts. So you've got things, examples like um, Golden Wonders Kung Fu, another personal favourite, 1974. You've got Wars uh, Sausages, I believe that's a Colette uh, Dickinson uh, Pierce um, uh, undertaking. And then you've got... Uh, you've got Pizza Hut in 94 and Super Noodles 98 and so on and so forth. I can go on. I can go on for, for hours. But what I really wanted to do is to focus on two adverts, which has helped to shape my identity um, during the 1990s. And, and they were, this is when I first started um, delving into advertising um, as, a, as a subject specialism. And, you know, as you, as you sort of look around for examples, these were the ones that really stood out for me. So the first one is Levi's 501 uh, Kung Fu uh, TV commercial in 1997, which was uh, directed by Jonathan Glazer for BBH London. Now, this 60 second advert, which was part of a, a move by the brand to become more sort of a, a pan-European uh, undertaking basically uh, follows and pays homage to um, Bruce Lee and it basically features a Vietnamese American actor uh, or model called Justin Nguyen who is the, the hero um, and with the brand message that um, yeah Levi's 501 jeans look better for longer um, if they're washed inside out and this uh, message was executed as follows. Using his um, spectacular Kung Fu skills, um, our hero, or Bruce Lee lookalike hero, escapes from baddies in a Chinese restaurant in San Francisco's Chinatown. Now, the action will then climax uh, in a Chinese laundry where the hero uh, throws the villain through the door, then steps coolly, and I mean really coolly, um, inside the laundrette to be confronted by a very beautiful oriental heroine. She stops loading the washing machine or doing whatever she was doing, because it's a Chinese laundry, um, and gazes adoringly at our hero. He then, what he does is uses special Kung Fu action to quickly turn the pair of jeans that she was holding from her hands inside out um, and hands them back to her before leaping out of the window, obviously shattering the window in the process. Um, and then it's then faced with the villains and the film sort of freezes to a, um, a closing shot uh, of our hero, our Bruce Lee character. And the end line is, yeah, Levi's 501 jeans best washed inside out.
fantastic, fantastic. The second advert, which also made had a great um, you know importance um, in terms of what what I'm talking about here, is a another 60 second television commercial, and in this case, it's the the Volkswagen's Self Defence 1998 advert uh, for BNP DDB by Ring and Led Ledwich. Uh, basically features a large group of what appears to be martial arts students practicing their moves with um, an instructor in eerie silence. Uh, they seem to be in a, in a, like a dojo or a training hall. Um, so they're, they're basically shown, this is in total silence by the way, and it sort of makes you stop what you're doing in your tracks and go, was that a television commercial that came on because I didn't hear anything. Um, when it was very, a lot of very, very busy commercials around that time in the 1990s. Um, and basically, they're following the uh, instructor's movements. So various different types of students following the um, instructor. And what you will get to see as the scene moves on is that they're actually following the movements of what you would do if you were going to get into your Volkswagen car, putting your gear stick uh using your gear stick and then you're sort of checking your rear view um, mirror, fastening your seat belt with the end line self-defense by Polo. Now the advert actually won the, the silver line uh, cans in 1999. So these two adverts, they're testament, I think, to the creative revolution of British advertising uh, at the time, um, as well as the influence of martial arts films in popular culture. So the both examples present two different ways that martial arts has, have actually seeped into British culture um, and basically how the genre is, is fetishized somehow um, or represented. So in the first advert, you've got the imageries constructed from, I think, what we call them um, chop um, socky martial arts kung fu comedy. Uh, which and it features obviously your Chinese restaurant. You've got your laundry set, Chinese laundry setting. You've got your Fu Manchu baddies, um, and you've got your, your sort of uh, Bruce Lee hero. Um, and there's not nothing too bad about this advert. In fact, I thought it was particularly, you know, it was quite cool how 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 that um, the the sort of main Chinese character is is depicted. Um, so. It, it was, you know, quite a positive representation, I thought, and it was quite authentic in that, you know, the stereotypes, they, they were absolutely everywhere. And, and, and I guess this is what uh, you might call quite, quite an authentic type of stereotype uh, ad. The Volkswagen Polo advert, Self-Defense, presents quite a different approach because it's non-Asian or non-Oriental students of different genders, nationalities, shapes and sizes following a sequence of moves from what seems to be a biracial um, sifu or master. So you could argue that this commercial showed um, the pew of martial arts to a, a much wider audience um, because it doesn't have that sort of um, uh, oriental sort of link link to it in any, in any way. Um, so, and this was shown in 1998 where we have a mixed race um, instructor, you have a pregnant student in the classroom as well as various different uh, other, other characters. Um, but it's quite quite an interesting way of looking at representation without any element of Oriental or Chinese-ness in it. Um, and it is about martial arts, which, you know, historically, you could say, is, is what um, Chinese culture is associated with. So, Looking at the last couple of um, years, there's a lot of talk about cultural appropriation. We have non sort of ethnic people um, being uh, depicted in doing ethnic things. So, you know, is that is that what this ad would have would have caused um, in terms of um, offence for for, you know, certain groups and so on? I don't know. Just I just thought I'll leave you with that thought. So what, what um, am I wanting to um, highlight is um, I think cultural understanding and awareness um, really, really important. And looking at cultural understanding and awareness from a historical point of view as well, 
because we're looking at things like representational um, factors and how rep representation is formed and where do they, where, you know, how these have been shaped by these sort of historical events. Um, and we, we, we also say how representation is now, uh, in the last couple of years, have been sort of linked to appropriation as well. So that's sort of, you need to sort of keep a track of what, how these sort of terminologies are changing and what's led to all these different sort of um, changes and of, of emphasis as well. So knowing all of these will help, I think, us with knowing our moral compass so that we don't obviously fall foul of the, um, the Ad Advertising Standards Authority for causing offence to, to others. Um, but the real fact remains, you know, in Britain, 8 million black, Asian and minority ethnic Bain population are underrepresented in advertising campaigns. Why is that? Um, um, is that something that the, the profession could, could do a lot more um, to try and reflect a bit more of a diverse um, population? Because the population is diverse and why isn't it sort of diverse in, in its representation? So I think a lot more um, research needs to be done and, and you know, a lot more questioning need, needs to be dealt with. I think part of the problem is the fact that we feel uncomfortable talking about race and um, discrimination, stereotypes, all those sorts of things we feel quite weighed down by because there's a lot of uh, negativity associated with them. It's a very emotive subject when we talk, talk about race, um, discrimination and what have you. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't talk about them because by having a platform in which to share our ideas, that's when we can think about making changes. I do understand there's lots going on, lots of initiatives going on uh, within the creative industries to try and change that. Um, but also we can make it fun too. You know, it doesn't have to be quite a negative, heavy, you know, such a heavy going thing for, for us to consider. If we look back at um, martial arts representation on, on television, uh, we're looking at things like social learning, really. And to a certain extent, discrimination and stereotypes is about looking at the impacts of social learning as well. Because when you're a youngster, impressionable um, being, um, as a teenager, like I was in the 1980s, you know, you might think about mimicking or imitating your, your heroes that, or your role models that, that you see on, on television. Uh, you know, looking at the way they behave, imitating the way they speak, and so on and so forth. Um, and basically, how we are depicted, the way we are depicted, or the way we see others like ourselves, being shown um, in, in popular media and so on, really does affect the way we sort of, you know, uh, relate how we relate to others. Because we start to question, is this our social reality? So basically, I asked myself, can all Chinese people do Kung Fu then? Because that's all I can see on television and it's all over the adverts. So that must be true then. So if you're a youngster and you're forming your identities, these become very important questions for, for you to think about. So the lack of imagery of representation of people like yourself that you, that you cannot see on TV can you know be be quite an important thing when when you're when you're quite young um and it, it's character formation you know really affects you know who who you become later on so on british uh television um during the 1970s and 80s um when these adverts martial arts advertising became very very popular there were hardly any um chinese people that you could see on on television so that means Looking at the context, the, these sorts of very little images that you see have greater representational power. Um, the other thing to note is that advertising is apparently supposed to mirror cultures and society and reflect to what is real. Um, but then advertising, you know, does it re really do that or is it actually distorting reality? Um, and only containing certain grains of truth about what is actually being represented. So, you know, have advertisers given enough thought about the consequences of their work uh, on others, on the other? 
Um, ads are supposed to reflect trends. You know, it's supposed to you're supposed to pick up on things that are topical right now, and in doing so, have you missed out on certain things about you know the fact that the ads are actually mirroring the real society, uh, what depicting what is actually real um, that is going on right now? Are we, are we sort of cherry picking certain bits that we want to represent because it's politically correct or because it's going to you know get us the um the awards and so on so we need to be mindful of um exoticizing others um in the creative work that we do so we need to question our assumptions the assumptions that we make um of others and also get to grips and know your history guys it's really getting to grips and know your colonial history because you know britain had a, a great colonial past and we need to talk about that we need to know what what led to this you know diverse uh, culture that, that we have now and um, it needs to be in our history lessons really um and if not if they're not in our history lessons go out and research it read about it i mean the bruce lee book here as the first section, the first chapter is all about the history and it's all about the colonial history, which I found absolutely fascinating why Bruce's um, family left uh, China to, to then sort of set up base in uh, San Francisco and so on and so forth. So all these things um, are definitely linked. They certainly have, have an influence because look at the colonial history, give us clues about um, the historical past looks at what sort of things are important to different uh, communities in society. Um, and some might argue that surely creativity is all about having novel ideas, something that's distinctive, and it's about looking always forward looking. Um, however, you cannot move forward and devise brilliant commercial art forms if we totally misunderstand um, the core of our society and how societal changes occurred in the past, because these have helped to shape communities as they are now. So, you know, that's really, really important. So whilst race and immigration are really, really sensitive topics to discuss and uh, difficult to navigate for some, um, I know, because I've had to deal with it in, in my day job as well, but uh, we should not basically adopt any sort of moral muteness pretend it doesn't exist or moral myopia not being able to see clearly the impacts of our creative work on the other so sorry i got a bit deep there there are some clues though i'll lighten up a bit um there are some clues that the ad profession um regularly draw inspiration from martial arts ideology and philosophy i wonder why that is so way deakin at a uh, AKQA London, quoted Bruce Lee. Um, I've, I've used that as a fantastic uh, quote uh, here. Basically he's saying that um, Bruce Lee has mastered various skills because Bruce Lee is famous for not just doing Kung Fu or Jeet Kune Do, which is he formed his own particular style, but he borrowed from Taekwondo and Karate and so on and so forth as well. So he didn't stick to uh, one style of martial arts. So he mastered various skills through the hard work he trimmed off any of the unwanted, lost the unnecessary, and what we're left with is the magic of simplicity. Um, and he said that Lee's contribution to advertising is similar to what uh, Bill Burnback of DDB, uh, his contribution have been, where creatives focus on refining the idea to be singular, pointed, and immediately relevant to our target audience helping our next generation of creatives to be focused. I thought, that's a really good one to sort of slot in there somehow. So maybe, actually, there are a lot more Kung Fu fighting advertisers out there than the first four. I shall end there. I hope you enjoyed this talk. I digressed a little bit. I think it's taken you on a bit of a journey, um, but I hope you've enjoyed it and it's given you some things to think about, um, some things to ponder over. Mm -hmm as we enter the, the new normal. I'm always happy to share ideas and talk, so please get in touch um, if you need to, even if it's to ask about what form of martial arts um, you should get into. So take care and stay safe, everyone. 
and um, yeah, see you around.